This is our work titled Traveling Salesman, Partition Cluster Co-Parametrization for Multi-Robot Cooperative 3D Printing. The research question we will be exploring is how do we sequence the printing of cells to increase parallelization for multi-robot cooperative 3D printing? Firstly, we consider this setup of robots in order to determine how we can organize space in general. We can assign all work to the closest robot and create a partition space like this, meaning all work in a given region will be assigned to those robots. Using the partition of space, we can define the parameterization based on the distance to the edges of the partition. We can also derive a parameterization from the distance to the branching points of the partition of space. In this case, this partition has two branching points, which we can create a parameterization from equal distances to the branching points. This allows for a parameterization based on the partition of space, which we call medial and radial, where medial is equal distance to the edges of the partition, where radial is equal distance to the branching points of the partition. These two provide the basis for how we can sequence printing of a part. We can then apply this to a cellularized space, where we use cell topology to create clusters of cells. What this looks like in the practical sense is robots can start printing at different clusters to avoid collision. The main question then is how do we find the optimal sequence of printing these clusters? This question of how to sequence printing is very closely related to the traveling salesman problem, where a salesman must traverse some cities and minimize the total travel distance. Other variations exist with multiple traveling salesmen, which must optimize their own routes simultaneously. In our case, the salesmen can be reinterpreted as robots, traversing their tasks. The traveling salesman is a combinatorial problem and can be difficult to solve. Therefore, we need a method to organize space which allows for natural sequencing of tasks. We can still take inspiration from other traveling salesman problems called the cluster traveling salesman problem, where Tasks are first clustered, then clusterings are sequenced for printing. A common approach to solve TSP style problems, and the one we use in this work, is called a genetic algorithm, which relies on creating a sequence called a chromosome, and then changing that chromosome. The overarching method for how we solve this genetic algorithm consists of generating an initial population, calculation of the best candidates in the population, mutation and crossover to change the sequence, and then continue the process until some termination criteria are met. In order to do this, we will set up a representation for a schedule, and then how modification of that schedule occurs in order to arrive at an optimal sequence. Our approach is to use the medial and radial parameterizations to cluster tasks parametrically, which we call parametric clustering. By using the parameterization, we're able to better understand the space that we are optimizing within without having to optimize every single cell individually, which is a very difficult problem to solve. Our collision avoidance strategy relies on robots checking position between each other 10 times a second, and if it's below a threshold, one of the robots will pause. Otherwise, all robots will continue printing. We are always constrained to be layer-wise, meaning robots can't work to the next layer without all other robots finishing that layer. In order to find the optimal sequence, we develop a cluster notation, which consists of the printing schedule, the robot number, and the cluster number. This allows us to get a schedule per robot, which in this example, cluster one for robot one is printed first, cluster two for robot one is printed second. We can then create a schedule for all robots. However, this printing schedule probably won't work since all robots will start printing near cells printed by other robots. So we can change the schedule and select two subsets within a given robot schedule and change them. So now cluster one for robot one is printed fourth and cluster two for robot one is printed fifth. We can do this again for robot number two and robot number three. Here you can see the change from changing each robot schedule. This is how we cross over and mutate for a genetic algorithm. We can also visualize how this printing schedule will occur where the first clusters will be printed first which in this case, robot three prints cluster one first. Then for robot three, it will print cluster two second. And then cluster five will be printed third. Cluster four will be printed fourth. And cluster three will be printed fifth. Within the schedule, each robot was printing in the medial direction, meaning at increasing offsets from the partition of space. However, we can change this. Two robots can print in the radial direction instead using the radial clustering. With this in mind, we then ask, 
How do I find an optimal sequence? We develop two methods for evaluating the time to print. A path-based approach, which relies on computing paths where robots traverse their path, check their distance, and if it's above a threshold, robots will continue printing, otherwise one of the robots will pause. We also develop an area-based approach, where we pre-compute cell distances and only use the cell ordering to check the pre-computed distance. If it's above a threshold, all robots will continue printing, otherwise one of the robots will pause and wait at its home position. We can visualize how this works, where the path-based imitates the robot setup, but it takes longer to compute. However, the area-based does not really imitate the robot setup, but it's a lot shorter to compute. Here you can see the difference in computing the distance between the nozzle to nozzle and the cell to cell, which is more conservative. With this in mind, we can then develop the objective function, which is based on the time to print. However, the time to print consists of extruding time, pausing time, moving time, and idle time per robot. The extruding time, meaning the time robots spend extruding material, does not change based on the schedule, and the idle time is only influenced by extruding, pausing, and move time discrepancies. This allows us to form the objective function from the pausing and moving time per robot averaged. We can then use this objective function to optimize the printing with two robots, where we can see that a combination of medial and radial performs much better than a non-clustered approach. We can then do the same thing with three robots, where we see that the combination medial-radial parameterization allows for a much better optimal in a lot fewer generations. The same can be seen in a four robot case, where the combination approach provides a much better optimal than just radial, just medial, or a non-clustered approach. We then demonstrate our approach using physical validation. Firstly, by printing a banana with a slicer-based approach, you can see there's very little collaboration between all three robots. The robots printing in red and blue primarily work together, and once they're finished, the robot printing in the middle, in black, finishes the work. We can also look at a cellularized, non-optimized approach, where we see that there is collaboration between three robots, however, there is not much collaboration between three robots. Finally, we can look at an optimized approach, where we see a lot of collaboration between all three robots. This is also demonstrated in the total time saving per layer. By applying optimization at every layer, we can optimize the printing schedule of a large object, in this case, printing of an Einstein model. For more details, please see our paper. Thanks for watching.